into crypto at the moment. You hear that? I'm listening. <laughs> You're getting in finally, okay. Just one second. Perfect, there we go. So there is actually reason for all of us to be loading up our bags today and tomorrow. And like I said, there's also reason for us to be getting our significant others, um, our family, our friends involved. And the first reason that we should be loading up our bags at the moment is because Binance is having a 48 hour flash sale. So until March 19th, so until the 19th, we've still got time, you pay absolutely zero when you use any bank card to buy cryptocurrency. So we've shown you guys this before and we'll get to it towards the end first. But if you go to this option, select ZAR, you can buy BNB, BUSD, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Dogecoin, whatever you like with absolutely zero fees until the 19th. So load up those bags, even if you don't know what you wanna buy, you can just buy some USDT or BUSD. And then the reason that Mauricio is soon gonna be a Binancean is because every single person that you refer, so we've actually had to extend this program by popular demand. For every single person you refer to Binance, that makes a purchase with their card. So if they do it in the next two days, it will also be free. Each of you get 75 Rand cash back. So in total 150 Rand for every single friend you refer. And because we're nice, we give them half and we get half. But there's absolutely no limit to the number of referrals that, that you can have. So if you refer a thousand people, you will get 75,000 Rand cash back. So if you ever needed any reason to fill your bags, to buy some crypto or to tell a friend about it, Binance has given you the perfect reason. Um, so this program runs until the 25th of this month. So you've still got a bit of time to do that convincing mark. You, but, you hear that? I think you should put it on your Instagram and then we can uh, have our next holiday covered. Okay, here. Yeah. There you go, holiday paid for. Um, uh -huh. And that, that's not just for Mark, that's for all of us here. <laughs> and then we can also load up our bags for free. So I know, I, I saw the peak in your eye when you saw this, Mark. It's just been launched, so not a lot of people know. Um, so we know what Mark's going to be doing straight after today's webinar. Mm -hmm. So the last bit of housekeeping before we get to some amazing stuff, as you guys know, at the end of every session, we do a lucky draw where five of you will walk away with 400 Rand each in crypto. So make sure that you join our communities. And if you don't have a Binance account, you can use this link to register one in under 60 seconds. So I promise you, I'm almost done. I can see everyone wants to get back to Mark. Uh, the last thing I'm gonna show you is the competition form asks for your Binance user ID. And I'm going to show you exactly where to find that. Last time, Mark only almost convinced me to click on a little eye. <laughs> oh, caps lock. Sorry, my caps lock was on. <laughs> You can see how secure Binance is, so you don't ever have to worry about um, your funds being at risk. You can see even with my username and my password, which we always cover, I've still got to use an SMS from my phone to log into my account. I think this is often the issue with uh, people's perception of crypto is that they're going to get hacked or it's just going to disappear. And I mean, yeah, if you've got enough security, it's, it's not it's highly, highly unlikely. Exactly. So, I mean, if you look at Binance as a platform, we do billions and billions of dollars a day in trading. 
Yeah. And if you do simple things on your end, like set up this two-factor authentication, um, you know, you really, really are safe. Mm. Um, so even if Mauritia gets your username and password, you know that your crypto is safe. <laughs> so guys, your user ID is, you just come to the little person icon, click on the first option. And when your Wi-Fi loads, you will then see right at the top here in your dashboard is a eight digit number that says user ID. So you literally just copy that and come and paste it here and Binance UID. You can also drop us some really, really cool questions for Mark. Um, and we will ask those live towards the end of the session. And we also ask that we're live on YouTube. If you check the um, chat box in the next few minutes, we'll drop the link. So. Being in crypto alone is not fun. And now you can see that it also pays to share. So make sure you share today's event. We are going to be dropping some amazing knowledge. So now that the housekeeping is done, well, we've got some really, really exciting stuff to share with users today, don't we? Yeah, well, I actually am almost embarrassed to show you this. I'm very old school, right? I've been drawing out candlesticks so that I can explain because this is beginning stages. I mean, the, the, you know, the thing is, whenever I show someone a chart, I mentioned it last time, they have no idea what they're looking at. And then you, you, you very quickly forget once you've gotten involved that people don't understand what a candle is and when it's, how it's closing and, and where the wick, what the wick means and the body and all of that. So, so yeah, I mean, it might be a good thing to, to explain that for those that are, very, very, uh, such beginners, you know? Well, um, we haven't all gotten to the Buckner level of trading, but uh, the goal of today is to take you one step closer. And I'm going to be teaching you some of the textbooks -y stuff. And we're privileged today that many of you may not know that Mark is an exceptional trader that literally trades on a daily basis. So as we teach you the very, very ground level basics um, of what tools you need in your arsenal to really start trading effectively, Mark is gonna be giving you the inside tips, hints, tricks of how he actually utilizes this on a daily basis. So, so where should we start? I think let's get started with the fun stuff. And um, as always, <clears throat> We have to plug the brand first. <laughs> so the exchange that has brought us all here today is Binance. And for those of you who don't know, Binance is the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange. We have millions of users all over the world. Um, you know, I, I don't want to sort of brand drop, but our CEO has been on the cover of Forbes. He's been on Bloomberg. So there is no more reputable place in the world that you can really be um, investing in trading in cryptocurrency. I've actually been watching a lot of talks with CZ um, and Michael Saylor and I mean, it, it, everyone, he's, he's really, uh, and he's such a smart, such, such an intelligent person. Um, yeah, just to listen to him talk to these, these big names out there, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's enlightening. It, it, it re it's, it's really inspiring, you know, to work with somebody like that is unbelievable. So I think the first thing that we should start with is what is trading? Because when we probably say it, right, we understand the basics of it. But like you said, when you show somebody a candlestick chart, um, and, and I've been guilty of this too, uh, we just start throwing out terms and, and you, you know, buzzwords that are just common to us. But the person on the other end is looking at you absolutely starry eyed, you know, he doesn't know what's going on. But I think that when they hear the word trading, they immediately think of this, right? They think all these different financial markets and lines and graphs and some sort of something that looks like wizardry. But at the end of the day, every single one of us fundamentally is a trader. We make trades every day. So when you go to the grocery store, put a bunch of goods in your basket, get to the toll, you're making a trade at that toll. You're trading a handful of cash for that basket of goods. 
So you've just made a trade with that institution or with the cashier, however you want to look at it. Um, you know, even when you were in high school or in college and one of your friends had um, a game that you really wanted to play and you had a game they really wanted to play. So you decided to swap these games for one another. You are literally a trader. You've just made a trade. And sometimes you go bargain hunting. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, and that is exactly it. So if you are one of those people that is always heckling at the shops, always getting the best price at the market, then it, I, I think those are the natural born traders, Mark. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Which uh, I think I've been doing that since I was uh, 11. Come on, surely you could do a better price. That's why I love Thailand, you know? <laughs> Because it's, it's, there, it's literally, I think we need to introduce them to charts because everything is trading there. Oh. Um, so exactly like Mark says, you just take that exact same concept and we're now applying it to financial assets, whether it's stocks, bonds, uh, cryptocurrencies, which we're going to be talking about today. That's all you're doing is you're coming to a central point and you're deciding to buy or sell something for a certain price. That is literally all trading is. So for this, we're actually going to go and show you um, what a market is and what a market pair is on the Binance platform. But I know especially um, there's a lot of Forex traders in, in South Africa and you always see these posts with AUD, GBP, um, you know, USD, CAD. And I know our Forex traders are probably going wild in the, um, you know, that are watching. But when you look at that, the, the normal person probably thinks that looks like something quite complicated, but all it is, is it's a market and a market pair. So let's go back to what we were chatting about earlier. Um, a market is just where you come to sort of buy and sell things. And a market pair is where you come with something that you want to sell for something else. So let's look at the Bitcoin czar pair. All it is, is it's a market. And in this market, people with Bitcoin are there to sell it only for rands. And in this market, people who have rands are only interested in using it to buy Bitcoin. So they come to this pair, which is Bitcoin czar, and all the people with the Bitcoin and all the people with the czar start bargaining with each other and trades are made. That is literally the explanation of order books, trades, graphs, all these things and concepts that you think are so complex, that is literally what they are. So Mark, I'd be very interested to know, how did your trading journey start out uh, in terms of the assets that you traded? So um, you mentioned last week that you were quite involved in, in stocks. So well, yeah, yeah, so as I said, from a young age, I, I always wanted to uh, buy and sell shares. I mean, it's the simplest thing you want to buy it at a lower price, sell it at a higher price. And then you've made extra, well, at that time I wanted extra rounds because that, that's what I wanted. And um, so then uh, initially I did that with a couple of properties and then got into, into some shares. And I mean, as I said, I still hold a lot of shares and um, it's, it's exactly the same thing. I just find crypto uh, uh, fluctuates much much in a much greater sense and um, and it, for me it's much easier and the information there's far far more information um, or whether it's even on the charts because it's moving so much so i think that actually leads perfectly into the next question so as someone who sort of traded both markets i mean we all watch movies like the wolf of wall street and you know suddenly we all want to be hedge fund managers mm. but as someone who's actually for a decent period of time, traded stocks, um, you know, invested in property, and then is now a, a crypto trader. What are the, the main differences you've seen between sort of being a player in those markets? And I know crypto is the best and the easiest, so I'm not gonna ask which is, but um, in your opinion, why is it? And, and what does it offer you that, uh, or the average person that they can't really get to in those other markets? I think really the information that's out there, it's user friendly. There's, it's a, it's a younger generation and they, they, they feel, it feels like you can, you can absorb better what, what they're saying because they speak in the same lingo, the same jargon. 
Um, and if you're starting off and you're, you're talking about uh, standard bank shares and, and uh, conduit and whatever else, um, you've got to go through pages and pages of uh, documents and, and then, uh, which can be beneficial if, if you have enough time. Um, but now, as, a, as we mentioned before, you can just plug on a, a YouTube channel and, and you'll have someone read it all back to you. So it's just, it's much quicker, um, the information that's out there. And it's just, it's so, it's so user friendly. Brilliant. And I, I have to completely agree with you there. Um, and one additional thing uh, I think that that's quite significant that people don't really notice um, is that the crypto markets never close. So mm. crypto markets trade 24-7, 365. And I'm sure that's afforded you certain opportunities as well when it comes to trading, you know, um, well, being able to make, yeah, go, go for it. I, so I look at my, I still have um, a, a decent amount of shares. I wish I had sold them all for crypto at this point because I would have been uh, in a much better position. But, but I've been holding for uh, between 10 and 15 years on some of them. And uh, obviously with the whole uh, lockdown and, and uh COVID pandemic, they're not doing so great. But it's, I look at it and then I know that five o'clock uh, South African time, it's going to be, there's nothing more that's going to be traded. And that's it for the evening. Done. Um, same with the weekend. Nothing's going to happen. So it's just not that exciting. It doesn't draw me in. Uh, whereas, like you said, I mean, uh, Sunday, a lot of great things happen on the weekends on, in crypto. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a huge difference in that sense. So the last one here is you've got to make a recommendation of one of the three to for, for beginners to start trading in, which is the easiest to get involved in. Um, so we all know the answer here, but we're just going to have to ask the question anyway. Um, trading stocks, trading crypto or being a property investor, which is the easiest to get involved with? and to, to start making money? Well, yeah, the, obviously crypto, but I'll give you a reason. The, the thing about property, which especially now, I mean, you, you're dealing with tenants, you're dealing with uh, the potential of people not being able to pay, um, you, uh, increasing costs, rates and taxes going up, um, water, now you've got uh, special levies and you've got all these things that uh, there's damage. There was wind recently, a replacement of a roof. It's just, it's an ongoing um, cost and there's a lot of admin. Whereas with, with crypto, uh, and also what I, what I often explain to someone though with property, if you saw your property fluctuate like you did on a chart, um, you would be freaking out every day because today you could not sell your property for half of, of what you believe its value is, but you'll sit for three months. And that's the difference with, uh, with trading and, and especially crypto. I mean, that's fluctuating all the time. So we all know that. In fact, after hearing that, um, the charts did seem complicated in the beginning. But I think after you managed all the, or mentioned all the things uh, a property investor has to take into account, uh, I'm sure the charts are looking a lot less intimidating right now. So yeah. that, again, we'll be covering in the live demo. But the first thing Mark mentioned um, when it got down to trading is that people don't understand what a candlestick is. And I think that is probably the best place to start um, if you want to trade any asset, because every single tool, method, um, you know, all of the wizardry that I spoke about at the beginning of the lesson, um, they all sort of happen the majority of the time on these candlestick charts. So the first thing that you're going to have to learn to deal with is looking at candles and understanding what happens. That's much better than my hand-drawn candles, which I'm still, I, I'm so impressed with them. I am going to show everyone if you can see it. So it's pretty okay. much the same thing, <laughs> just drawn very badly. I'll never do that again. I was about to say, I, I, I'm, it's much better than I would have drawn them. So I'm quite. <laughs> um, I can draw a square, there, a rectangle. <laughs> so, Mark, uh, why don't you go ahead and use this slide instead of 
um, your notes, but don't mm. worry, I'm also very analog myself. Um, and, and we're now a new trader or investor who's come to you and explain to us what exactly is a candlestick and what is a candlestick chart? So, so the candle, okay, red, bad, green, good for, for now. Um, but so now you've got the wick, which is the very thin part, and you've got the body, which is the, the green and the red. Um, the, the wick, it goes up to the, the most that it's gone. And then if it's green, that's what it's closed at in a, um, in a positive. And then if it's red, it's closed in the negative at the lower point. Uh, but not at the bottom of the wick. That's the, that's the furthest down that it's gone in price. So, so I mean, that, that's the basis of what a candle is. And um, as you can see, the, the wicks are the very, very thin part all the way through. Um, yeah, where should, where should we go from here? Let's, um... oh, exactly. So um, I think because we don't have, I'm trying to choose the right annotation tool. I'll try this. So exactly like Mark was saying, you've essentially got four pieces of information in the candle. You've got like the highest price that it went to for that period, the lowest price, and the open and the close. So exactly like you said, this little wick here shows you the lowest that this candle went in terms of- I, I, need, a, I need a pointer. Um, yeah. Okay, I've, my, my mouse does not uh, reflect on that end. Oh, no, no. Um, I think we're gonna have to fix that. Oh, sorry. Let me just... So like Mark was saying, a single candle tells you four things. So what price it started at or it opened at, what price it closed at. So when the day ended, what was the price? But also the highest and the lowest price for that single candle, right? Because we all know that sometimes Bitcoin can open at 50,000, close at 51,000, but everything else that happens in between is, is not really captured by that thousand dollar move. So if we look at an example of this, if we look at this candle here, it's red which means that the price opened there, it closed at the bottom here, but it actually went a lot lower before it closed. It went all the way down to here. And the highest that it went for this period was the top of the thin line at the top here. So this candle is red because it started here and then it went down and it closed. But this candle was green because it started here and then it went up before it closed. And each and, candle's reflecting a time frame that, that you would have chosen on the chart to, to view. So it could be five minute candlestick, um, it could be an hour, 15 minutes, uh, a week, a day. Exactly, so I always like to use the day as an example because that, that just makes it a bit simpler. But if this was a daily chart, it means that every single candle is one day. So for example, um, this is today's day, the 17th, which means that this would be the 16th, this would be the 15th, this would be the 14th. So what can we tell about the 14th of March? Well, this was the opening price. This was the closing price. It's green because the closing price is higher. It also went all the way down to this point on the 14th of March, and then it went back up. And it also went all the way up to this point on the 14th of March but it closed there. So same thing for the 13th, the 12th. And if we're now looking at a four hour chart, this would be the current four hours. This would be four hours ago. This would be eight hours ago. This would be 12 hours ago. So you can see that once you understand what a candle is, a candlestick chart is literally just a bunch of candlesticks um, in a, success, a successive period. And all you're really looking at is what was price doing over a certain amount of time. And one of the easiest ways to figure out what price is doing is to look at the trend. Uh, so Mark, I wonder if you can actually, I'm, I'm sure you can, finish the sentence for me. So it's a famous saying within trading, the trend is your... Oh yeah, your friend, but of exactly. course. So can you explain exactly what a trend line is, what a trend is, and, and why the trend is our friend when we're trading? 
So that's going to point into the direction that, that the market's going. So if, it, if uh, the market's trending downwards, then generally it would be going, uh, the price would be uh, weakening. So you would obviously be wanting to buy at a lower price and sell at a higher price to make a profit. Um, I've actually drawn out a few, a few <laughs> again, we've got some more drawings here for us. And you want to determine where your resistance and support lines are. Because obviously you would rather buy at the lower point, which is your support, and then you want to sell at your resistance. And the, the market will consolidate. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to go, say, up. And now it's going to consolidate range bound for a bit. And then that can help you determine through your candlestick chart which way it's going to go from there. And if it, then you're going to follow your trend line. If it's going upwards, then the likely movement is again upwards. Brilliant, Mark. So, do you know what? Even as a, someone who is an active trader, um, that actually made things a lot simpler for me. So, people always, always, I think the first thing they ask is, how do you know when to buy? How do you know when to sell? How do you know? Um, whether it's going to go up or it's going to go down. So nobody knows for certain, but these are all the tools that people use to help them in their trading decision-making. So yeah, exactly. the most, the most, if, it's, if there's numerous touches on that resistance or that support, the more touches it hits your resistance, the more likely it is that it's going to break through and vice versa. Um, so now you're looking for, higher highs versus lower lows, higher highs going up and lower lows uh, if you're, if you're um, going short, going down. Exactly. So let's look at that graphically. So we can see that this is an uptrend, right? There is a line here, which is a trend line. It shows like literally just the basic direction that these candles on this candlestick chart, which we now know what it is is going, right? So it, it, it's, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see this is going upwards. And the reason we say the trend is your friend is because like Mark said, if the trend is upwards, it's more likely that the price is gonna go up. If the trend is downwards, it's more likely that the trend is gonna go down. And a, an uptrend, just like exactly like Mark said, is characterized by higher highs and higher lows. So when somebody says that to you on a YouTube video, it sounds like a technical thing that you'd have to do. But really, this high is higher than this high. This low is lower than this low. This high is higher than this high. This low is lower than this low. That, that really is all it is. And if you consistently see higher highs and higher lows, you've got an uptrend. If you consistently see lower highs and lower lows, you have a downtrend. And if you draw a line in the direction that price is going, you've got an idea of which way the trend is going. So the first thing you should probably be doing is identifying a trend for yourself to follow. And these are probably some of the simplest but most important concepts in trading. Um, so I'm just going to give you a definition and I'm going to leave it to Mark to tell you how to use them because he was actually just on the verge of explaining that to us. So I always like to just use my room when I'm explaining this. So if I try to jump through the ceiling, um, the roof would very quickly smack me back down. And the roof, you know, hopefully a solid roof, um, is acting like resistance for me because every time I try to go through the roof, it's pushing me back down. And the same way I've got a floor beneath me and, um, you know, if my neighbor was perhaps a little bit annoying and I wanted to go and have a word with him, um, I wouldn't be able to just sort of go straight down to my neighbor's house because I've got the floor, which is a floor. So every time I try to go through it, it's just going to stop me. And that's the best way to think of these concepts of support and resistance. Um, sorry, the wrong way, support and resistance. So resistance is just like where price has a roof over it. So it's really struggling to go past that point. And support is like where price has a floor. 
So every time price gets there, it can't really go any lower. So now that I have done the textbook definition, Mark, can you tell us how we can practically get support and resistance and use support and resistance as a trader? Sorry, I just realized I had the aircon playing in the background. Uh, hopefully the horrible sound is gone. Um, yeah, so for me, um, as soon as I can chart out where resistance is, that's where I play. Uh, uh, support and resistance, that's where I play. Um, because then I'll be, if, if I'm day trading, then, then each, I'm, I'm going to want to look at um, one hour candles, five minute candles in order to get that, uh, uh, to make that little bit of profit on each time it touches resistance. So here you can see, well, like you said, that it's bouncing between here. And this is exactly where you would want to buy that support. I'm pointing as if everyone can see, but you want to be buying that support and then selling that resistance. And it, if, you know, they, I also bring in um, fundamentals like the news, which is why I'm always having that playing in the background. But um, you can determine that through, uh, through relative strength index, as well as uh, where there's um, enough funding coming in and everything else. Brilliant, brilliant. So I, I love Mark's trading journey because everything he said is everything we're going to be teaching you the, the, the basics and the foundations of. So, you know, if we could teach you all how to be professional traders in an hour, I have a feeling there'd be a lot more professional traders out there. But Binance has some amazing in-depth resources um, that actually teach you about every single one of these concepts in depth. So I am going to share that shortly. And next week, you need to tune in because we'll be looking at these things live on graphs. So, Mark, you mentioned... Oh, well, there we go. We got, uh, right. we go. You mentioned the relative strength index. Um, what is it and how does a trader use it? So... Um, yeah, just give me one sec, sorry. I've got a call that I'm trying to just cancel. I don't know why it's coming through on here. It's new digital world that we live in. So, yeah. So, yeah, so oversold and overbought. Um, so you want to work out where that is. Through, if, here's, here's the overbought market. So a lot of, there's going to be a lot of sellers here. And then oversold, there's more likely to be a lot of buyers, which is why it would then most, you can pick that up and then you, you would mostly be able to see when you'd be going upwards from there. So brilliant. So basically when the RSI, which you can all add to your chart is above 70, you're saying that it's overbought. And as a trader, what do you do if a market is overbought? Well, you would most likely sell to save yourself the loss of the, uh, of a little crash so that yeah i would sell at that point and then the moment i get to 30 then i would try and buy it back again or around there at least so the rsi gives us good buy and sell signals so if it's overbought it's it's essentially a good sell signal and if it's oversold it's essentially a good buy signal yeah yeah exactly brilliant brilliant um and again uh, intuitively if you know, the, the normal person looking at this from an outside perspective saw so overbought. They would probably be like, oh, this is a great place to buy. Everyone's buying it. Um, yeah. So, you know. That's where, the, that's where the FOMO uh, sets in. And that's why you need to be contradictory to the market. And then uh, as converse on, on oversold, that's where the FUD sets in. And you would want to then buy. So you've heard it here first. We're dropping... Absolutely golden nuggets when it comes to trading, both textbook wise, and we're showing you how it's really used. Um, so the next sort of key thing that I think I'm going to touch on a little bit is moving averages. And the reason being is it's a really quite simple. So if we just go back to, I know a lot of us probably don't want to go back here, um, but to maybe that, that grade nine maths class, um, or if you're a little bit older than me, standard something. Um, and you remember that we had 20 numbers and they want to know what the average is. So all we did was we added these 20 numbers up and we divided it by 20 and it gave us the average. 
that is exactly what a moving average is, except that if we're looking at the 15 day moving average, tomorrow they add the current day and they take out the day that's 16 days ago. So every time there's a new day, they take out the last one, they add the new one, and they just divide it by, in the case of the 15 day moving average, they divide it by 15. So all this line is telling you is the average price of Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever you're looking at over the last 15 days. So as a trader, if price is above um, the 15 moving average, you know that it's really, really aggressive at the moment because it's above where the average price of the last 15 days is. And those kind of concepts come in, you know, across the board. Some of the key moving averages that people actually use are the 200 and the 50 moving average. And just like we covered the, the concepts of support and resistance earlier, some people actually use moving averages as levels of support as well. So Mark, have you ever done that? Or do, are there any specific moving averages that you find quite effective in crypto maybe? Yeah, I've been focusing more on the 50 and the, and the 200, um, looking for, also looking for a golden cross. But um, yeah, it, for, for some reason that hasn't really been helping me a lot lately because there's just so much going on fundamentally with, um, so I haven't been focusing on the, on the MA. So I think that takes us to another good point is that don't just look at the charts in isolation. Also understand, you know, um, what's going on in the market because let's just say for example um, you're trading a certain coin and the chart tells you everything that you want to hear but maybe one of the founders of the team did something slightly bad um, you know no matter what the chart says then chances are the price is going to go down so you need to look at everything holistically as a trader so you need to know what's going on in the charts which essentially means what's going on with price but also what's going on in the market with the project, et cetera. Um, what do you think, Mark? Is that correct? Well, and then eventually it's going to create a, it's a new range. Um, so then you would look at a new support and resistance from there. So if something negative occurs, um, then you would expect a drop. But eventually that balances out. And, um, and then you can, I would try to sit back for a bit from there. Um, and then and then start playing back into the market. So we now have a couple of tools in our arsenal. Um, we've got trend lines or trends. Um, we've got support and we've got resistance. We now have our moving averages. We've got our RSI, which lets us know if something is overbought or oversold. Um, and we also know what to do when something is overbought. Uh, and the answer is generally not buy. So I think because we've actually dropped such amazing knowledge, uh, a lot of you probably forgot that we were giving away 2000 Rand in crypto, but we are still doing that. So I think as a little intermission, uh, Mark, by the way, you're not allowed to enter. <laughs> but I already have. <laughs> so as a little uh, intermission here, check the chat function and the competition entry form has been dropped. So you have enough time, um, you know, we're going to be going on for like another 10 or 15 minutes. So you can actually register a Binance account directly from that form. It takes you like 10 seconds. Mark, how long did it take you? Uh, what did we say the other day? A good 12 yeah. and a half? <laughs> 12 and a half, yeah. So somewhere in the middle, if you decide to take it a bit easy like Mark, might take you 12 and a half seconds. Um, but you can register that. Exactly. Register that, fill in that form. You know what a Binance UID is now. I've shown you guys. Um, so now let us return to today's scheduled program. So actually, before I carry on, like I said, you know, an hour really isn't enough to um, really delve deep into some of these concepts uh, as much as we wish we could. And delving deep into these concepts is exactly what Binance Academy does. And it is available for every single level of user. And you can see that it's not just for traders. So 
if you've ever asked yourself the question, what is Bitcoin? Well, there is an entire beginner's answer for you here on Binance Academy. But um, because we're all becoming traders, very, very successful traders that trade 24 seven because the crypto markets never sleep, we are more interested in some of the amazing guides that are available on Binance Academy. So you can literally just type in guide, oh, sorry, just type in guide, not guides. And you can get yourself started with the beginner's guide to day trading cryptocurrency. So we heard Mark, Mark's actually a day trader. We heard him say just now, um, see, I do pay attention. We heard him say just now, he, he trades on the one hour, the four hour, just to make those intraday gains. So that is a great trading strategy. And if you want to know how to get started, um, we've given you the building blocks, but you can really start delving deep in Binance's beginner's guide. Um, if you really want to delve super deep, we have a complete cryptocurrency trading guide for beginners. Literally, as you can see, step by step, takes you through trading versus investing, technical analysis, all of the tools you need. Uh, and the amazing thing is Binance also has a really, really cool Binance Academy, sorry. Binance too, we have an amazing app, which all of you should have by now. But Binance Academy actually has an amazing app too. And you can learn these things literally while, uh, well, hopefully not in the middle of a lecture, but you know, whether you're sitting in an Uber, whether you're waiting for your food at a restaurant, you can get stuck into some of these amazing lessons. So I'm not, I wish I could, but I'm not gonna go through all of them, but you can see everything from Fibonacci retracements, candlestick charts is all available to you on Binance Academy. And we've got content that suits beginners, intermediates. And if you're really advanced and you want to know how to create algorithmic trading strategies, Binance literally has those guides on Binance Academy. So we've given you the building blocks and we've shown you how, what are the core sort of tools you need to have in your arsenal? and What are the core things you need to understand to be a trader? Um, next week, we'll be putting them a little bit more into action. But while we give you guys some time to uh, fill in those forms, we are going to take a few questions for Mark. So while I drop this chat, uh, sorry, while I drop the competition form in the chat again, um, you guys can either drop it in the Q&A, drop it in the chat. Um, you can raise your hand. I can see a lot of people are already raising their hands. I, I, was, I see someone asking a good time to buy Ether. I mean, it's, um, it's always a difficult thing to answer because depending, you know, are you, are you looking to sell today? Are you, looking, are you looking for that profit? How soon are you looking for that? Um, on the, on the, is looking, Ether is looking very good in every sense, um, technically as well as uh, fundamentally. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm very positive for how that's going to be going. And, uh, and because there's so much news coming through, that's going to change a lot of what's happening on the charts itself. Any other questions that you, you'd like to pick out specifically before we go to some live ones? I'm just picking up what's uh, observed. Um, top five coins for the, for the next month. Ooh, I like uh, that question. Yeah. Um, well, definitely, uh, I mean, Ada and Binance, um, because, because of the competition between Ethereum and uh, I, I think, I really believe that altcoins, a lot of them are going to be taking center stage soon. And uh, so I would be looking at, as opposed to Bitcoin, definitely Ada, Binance, Ethereum. What, what's, your, what's your two from two extra? Hey, Branson. Uh, well, uh, as a Binance employee, I'm not allowed to. Uh, yeah, sorry <laughs> about that. Uh, you in the spot there. But uh, if we, uh, it's just, this is not financial advice, but if we take a look at BNB, um, I, I was actually on a podcast, I think it was on Wednesday, um, where we were chatting about 
and, and Mark, I know you'll know about this. There were parts of December, like, I, I mean, this December, not 20, this December that just passed, where Binance Coin was trading at under $30, so $29 something. Um, and, and I know you always have the charts open there, um, or the app, and what are we trading at today? Okay, let's see. I actually haven't been looking at Binance now. Let's see. BNB, where are we? Um, so 261. Mm, that, that is almost 10x from December. And that, uh, yeah, I mean, we're always looking for that. Ten, what, what coin is going to give us that 10x? We want that, that exponential growth. That, I mean, that's, that's exactly why. Why you trade in altcoins, right? I mean, it's you, you're looking for a much bigger growth compared to Bitcoin. So I think um, let's jump into one of the live questions. So guys, I really don't be shy. Um, I promise you don't have to speak to me. You can speak to Mark. Uh, so we've got Kenneth Smith who has their hand up. Uh, so Kenneth, I am going to allow you to talk. Just unmute yourself and go ahead. Still muted, Kenneth. Hi. There you go. Hi, Hi. Kenneth. All right, you. How's good. it? Okay, I'll just, I'm actually just a beginner still. I've been trading for a couple of weeks now. And, um, you know, when I pulled in this form now, I, I actually didn't even know because I go straight into my account. I didn't even know what my code is to get on. So on, I see on the form here, I had to put in my code. So I didn't know what code to put in there. So I'm just going to put my name. Is that all right? Um, put in your, your email address then. So we'll, we'll be able to link it to your account. Okay. Okay. That's fine. And thanks a lot. I've enjoyed it up to now. You are most, most welcome. We hope to see you next week for week three or part three. Well, well I, can, I can say I'm up about 10% over these two weeks. So oh, nice. <laughs> that is, you, you know, I, your bank won't even give you that over a year. Um, <laughs> That's so, for sure. well uh, and, is, you know, is, that through, is that through trading or is that through holding, Kenneth? Have we lost you? I think we've, I think, I think we have lost Kenneth. Um, no. okay, Kenneth, so has that been from trading or from just investing? Um, trading and in, investing. So, but I've also had my neighbor helping me a little bit. So he's been doing it for two years. So I can't say it's all my, all my oh, doing. Brilliant. So there you have it, you know, find yourself a good mentor like Mark. And I'm sorry, I'm so tempted. I just have to say it. My neighbor, Alice. Um, so for all of you on Binance Launchpool, you'll know about it. If you found that funny, please drop a one in the chat for me. Um, but yeah, like you saw uh, exactly from, from Kenneth, is find yourself a good mentor. And it doesn't take, you know, five years, like getting a master's degree. Kenneth just told us he's been in the space for a few weeks. He's found himself a good mentor who's been in the space for a while. So if you're looking for one of those, I'm actually going to make sure that I drop the social links one more time because um, in those communities, you can literally get a hold of people like me, the Binance Angels, and we have an absolutely amazing community that's always posting analysis, helping users out. So let us go for another question. And... I think this time, um, let's try Laura. So Laura Davies, um, I've allowed you to talk. Just go ahead and unmute yourself. Just gotta unmute yourself, Laura. Hope you're not getting some stage fright now. Okay, let's try um, Fahim. Fahim. 
Hi guys. Uh, Brilliant. How are you good. doing? Not hey, too bad. Good? good, good. Guys, question. Um, I've done a little bit of research on Tata. What's your views on it? Especially Mark. I mean, Tata looks good. I, I checked um, how the other video streaming services were performing initially when they started off, uh, like YouTube and Twitch. And they also started off like a bit of humble beginnings and they've grown quite substantially. And I noticed with Tata, it's starting off like that. And what's the potential of it growing to that sort of stardom? <laughs> It's so, it's so difficult with, um, with these coins because, uh, I mean, when there's the such low cap, I struggle to get my head around trading um, coins like that. I just don't enjoy it because I don't feel like there's enough info. I mean, obviously, there you can get a much greater return, but I, mm. I would rather, that's my risk management as such. I would rather trade um, coins. I mean, how do you feel, Brenton? So, uh, personally, I can't talk about the specific projects, but I think that um, there's two ways to look at it, right? So, and, and this is something that one of our angels actually um, articulated to me. So, Lindley, I know you're there in the background. A lot of you in our communities will know Lindley. Uh, you've got to realize that although there's a lot more risk um, in these, these sort of lower cap altcoins, it's a lot easier for something that has a $100 million market cap to triple and get to 300 million than it is for Bitcoin's price to triple, mm. which will take it from a $1 trillion asset to a $3 trillion asset. Um, so in saying that, Bitcoin is probably, probably, in my opinion, far less risky than those altcoins. But can it double, triple, quadruple in value? Um, most likely not in the short term. So I think it's great to play in both spaces, but you've got to know what your risk appetite is. And, you know, you, if you're trading risky things, don't be using capital that you're going to need. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's much easier for something to move from 10 cents or a dollar to $2 or, or 40 cents, you know what I mean? Versus, as you say, Bitcoin to quadruple, it's a, a lot more money has to move into the market as a whole. And, and these, these coins, they move so quickly with just a little bit of good news. You know, they, then you see this big pump, but then very likely and very often a, a, a bigger. I can say for him is that you should be able to find some amazing info on like some of the fundamentals on Binance Academy. So you guys saw, um, I showed you an article called What is Bitcoin? Well, there is full basic level breakdowns on, you know, what is Tezos, what is Filecoin, what is Theta. Um, so over and above just learning trading skills, like the guides I showed you, you can actually learn about specific products, what they do, what problems they're trying to solve. And that'll give you a bit of a, a, a better um, information base to make decisions on what you want to trade and invest. Um, for him, I hope that helped you out a bit. Yes, uh, definitely. Um, it's about utility. It comes back to utility. I'm an XRP fan. So, yeah, it comes back to utility. And I feel uh, with uh, Tata, it's uh, focused towards a billion-dollar market, I would say, the gaming industry. And mm -hmm. um, I've done a bit of research. And, I, <laughs> well, that's my just my personal opinion of feeling like that. No, thank you very much for bringing that up. So a lot of you in the call, if you think gaming is the, the next sort of frontier, if you think it's a big market, go to Binance Academy and check out Data Token and uh, you know who to thank um, if things work. <laughs> so thank it's you. Financial me. advice, guys. <laughs> it's uh, you to bring up utility because that, that's, there's a, seems like some people on the other side of the spectrum, they don't care about the utility at all. And they just care about the name. Um, but I, I feel the same way. I mean, I try to spread it over, but uh, which is exactly why I'm also a big fan of XRP. I mean, the, what it can do and, and the benefits to, to all of us. Oh, and everything the else. XRP army in the house. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. So I think... Uh, as usual, in fact, we always just enjoy your company far too much, Mark. Um, so we're a few minutes over time. So I think what we'll do is let's take two more quick questions, guys. Please try to keep it brief for Mark. 
And then, of course, we will do our lucky draw. So I've seen all of you entering. Um, so in the next, after the next question, we'll cut off entry. So there's still time, type away. So two more questions, lucky draw, um, and check the chat for parts one and to catch the recording on YouTube of today's session. So our second to last question, um, Venant Lo. I've allowed you to talk. Uh, hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. So, hi, Anantia, um, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, 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 good. Oh, so like, oh, like oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little, I'm new uh, in the in the trading industry. I just have um, noted one thing: like uh, some coins are in limited supplies, and then some coins are like uh, have unlimited supplies. So I was just like what, uh, wondering, uh, in a long term point of view, like when you're investing, not speculating, like what would be the best option? So you would say, um, is it uh, best to invest in the coins that? have limited supplies or the ones that would have uh, unlimited supplies. And then also like when you are speculating, uh, what would be uh, the consideration given like one is in limited supply and then the other is in unlimited supply. That's my question. Very nice. Thank you, Anati. Um, so Generally, Mark, I, yeah, people I, I, love, to, yeah. love to know that they've got a Porsche, uh, something, it's the same as the NFT, something that fewer people can get their hands on. Um, and then when you know that that supply is going down and more and more people are accumulating, then it does often drive up the price. Um, but then, then you've got other coins that, you know, it's the utility that outweighs that. So, so I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't always be too concerned. Just do your, your research and your homework on, on what that is, what that coin um, does do, and um, then take that into consideration. So right. don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, a limited supply is always good because of scarcity. But if you've got the unclear supplies, like you heard, if the utility is there, then there's no reason why it couldn't also still be a good thing. So I, right. I hope that helped you out a bit, Anati. Thank you, guys. You are most welcome. Okay, so last question before we decide who is going to be crypto rich tonight. And the last question, uh, why don't you pick Mark so you can see the attendees with their hands raised? Where do I see that? Oh, right, okay. Let's see. So wait, I go to chat, no, I'm at chat here. Okay. So next to panelists, you'll see okay. attendees. Everything is about Alice here, I see. Yeah. Um, so we've got Alistair Howard, um, Shweb Omar, Fire Bamji. So how would you recommend using BC pair or would you use DS USDT? Um, okay, so maybe uh, Nabil. So Nabil. Have you been, there we go, and Nabil, I think you should be unmuted. No. So you just need to unmute yourself, Nabil, join in. Uh, also guys, uh, also new to the crypto uh, space. Uh, I just want to like the BTC being so high, uh, obviously, pairing your altcoin uh, with BTC uh, would that obviously not work in your favor if uh, BTC has to drop. So uh, repeat that. If BTC were to drop, must you right at the end? I think then, Neville. Uh, if BTC has to drop, that would work uh, against you uh, holding a BTC uh, pair with your alt. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. So I, I think it, it, it all depends on what you're doing on that pair. So remember, um, so the first thing to note is Bitcoin is usually the market leader. So if it goes up, everything generally goes up. If it goes down, everything generally goes down. 
But with those pairings, so let's just say um, we've got an Ethereum Bitcoin pair. So if the price of Bitcoin is going down, you're not at any disadvantage because all of your assets are sitting in Ethereum. So as long as you're not trading in that pair, um, nothing is essentially happening to your assets. But in saying that, because Bitcoin is going down, it's very likely that everything else will be going down as well. So will it affect your cross pair holding like Ethereum, Bitcoin, Tezos, Bitcoin? Um, not if you're not trading the pair. Uh, will it affect if you're holding a bunch of altcoins? It'll most likely affect the value of Bitcoin for. Yeah, yeah and, and just to, uh, you know, it's generally when Bitcoin stagnates uh, or gets boring that, that the altcoins start to move. Okay. Uh, Money to flows from, from there into the, the altcoins. Yeah, yeah, it's actually quite well known as the, the money flow cycle in crypto. Mm. Um, very nice. So, Mark, I, I think we had an absolutely amazing session today. We've, we've got some nuggets of knowledge. Um, so, let's just do a two minute recap. We know what a candlestick chart is, it's just a bunch of candles, and each candle tells us four things opening price closing price, high price, low price. That's what those funny little thin lines are. Um, we know that the trend is your friend. Uh, we know how to identify trends. If you've got higher highs, higher lows, it's an uptrend. If you've got lower highs, lower lows, it's a downtrend. And as a trader, it's always more beneficial to trade with the trend. So if it's an uptrend, most likely you're going to expect that the market's going to go up to help you decide exactly where it's gonna go up to or where it's gonna come down to. Uh, we have support and resistance, which is like our floor and our ceiling. And we've also got the RSI, which tells us when things are overbought, oversold. And we also know that overbought means we should sell and oversold means we should buy. So you can catch a recap of all of this info um, as well as those amazing guides on Binance Academy, which will take you in depth into exactly how to draw your support lines, what they are, how to use them. Um, but now it is time to uh, improve some people's crypto accounts without any charts. So Mark, I know last time we needed a drum roll. Um, if you would be so kind. Uh, so, that Every time, that's, Every that's time, the, yeah. the comedy one. <laughs> oh. Well, this is going to be very fun for whoever wins. So, guys, we have four winners today who are each going to be walking away with 400 Rand in crypto. Um, and, and, you know, like we taught you today, uh, if you go and learn those skills and apply it very well, it will be worth a lot more in the future. Or if you just buy something like BNB and, and wait a few months, it will be worth 10 times the value. So as you can see, uh, everyone who entered in time, your names are here. We've got all your Binance UIDs, um, which you also submitted. So we know exactly where to send the rewards. And our first lucky winner for today is... Rolf. Rolf de Silva, congratulations. If you are Rolf's friend, uh, make sure you ask him if he's sharing. <laughs> Second lucky winner. Okay. Congratulations. Lucky you've got your Binance UID. Um, so we know exactly where to send those awards. So we have two more winners. Who is it going to be? Mark, I'm watching for your name now. I hope you didn't Yeah, no, I was about to say, why is my name not here? <laughs> uh, Rana Koko, congratulations. 400 Rana Crypto is coming your way. And the last winner for today, before we wrap up part two, remember next week we'll be back for part three. Um, quickly, before we get the last winner, for the next 48 hours, you can buy cryptocurrency completely free with zero transaction fees on Binance. Um, you also get 75 Rand and give your friend 75 Rand for every single person that 
you refer to Binance. And if you attend our events, then you could be like our fourth lucky winner. In a country, and you could just get some cryptocurrency. So once again, congratulations to all of our winners today. Uh, make sure you fill those bags with the zero fee promo. Make sure you add your friends and your families um, and share and get that 75 Rand. And we will see you here next week for a practical session of some of these concepts on some live charts. So Mark, do you have any final words um, for your beloved fans? Well, I was gonna say, I mean, yeah, once you've determined your range and you can always use the, the added indicators that uh, read up on as many on the Binance page. Uh, the, there are many indicators just to support what you, uh, what you feel is the move, the next move. And yeah, that, that would, uh, that would help, that would help uh, you make your decision. Brilliant. And, and I think what um, Kenneth mentioned was so important, you know, uh, at, at the behest of, of, uh, of maybe upsetting some people, make sure that you don't just blindly follow people. So don't go find a signal group on Telegram that just posts random things and they do what they say. Understand what you're doing. Get yourself a mentor that you actually know or can trust. Um, so Mark's hands might be a bit busy at the moment, but if you join the Binance South Africa Telegram group, we have some exceptional traders there. Um, our, our Binance angel, Lin Lee, um, is literally, they call him the guru because he knows everything when it comes to the Binance platform and trading. So if you ever need help, we are literally at your beck and call in that group. So everyone have a wonderful evening. Uh, Mark, any final words? No, uh, well, good luck and do as much reading as you can and learn about all these indicators because uh, there are so many and try and master a handful. Don't try and spread yourself. Otherwise, you're going to give yourself the wrong, uh, the wrong info. And um, yeah, it's all in the chart. Well, you know what? To make sure that everybody does their research. So we want to know what indicators you looked at um, over this week and what exactly you learned. And there may very well be a little surprise in it um, for the most interesting indicator. So if you ever needed any more motivation to get your research done this week, um, you've already got your weekend full with Finance Academy. So everyone, good night, and we will see you next week. Have a good night, everyone. Cheers.